Well, hello, my friends. Jason Levine here, and we're coming to you live from Mumbai, India. Today, we're going to take a look at part two of our DSLR editing workflow in Premiere Pro CS5, taking a look at the new Ultra Keyer, doing time lapse and time remapping, and also doing extraction to digital stills from your DSLR video footage. Let's take a look. Okay, so now we're in the timeline, and again, we're going to talk about first one of my favorite things uh, in Premiere Pro CS5, which is the introduction of the Ultra Keyer. It's ultra fast, haha, <laughs> ultra cool, and um, it's got a lot of incredible parameters. It's a vector based keyer, so a little bit different than Keylight. There are uses for both, and of course, you can always use Keylight in After Effects, but I'm going to show you again how to just take your uh, your footage directly off that DSLR and do and pull some really quick keys even with marginally lit footage and as you can see here this is not the best green screen um, it wasn't lit terribly evenly this was actually just recorded at our beach bash in Dubai but I'm gonna show you again how very quickly even I can get a pretty decent looking key so um, again just to kinda show you here this happens to be uh, this is 1080p footage 24 frame and if we just play a little bit of this back you can kinda see what it looks like Adobe Beach Bash 2010 for Adobe Middle East. And okay, so this is my friend Summer. So uh, again, we're currently viewing this at uh, quarter res, but you notice the pause res is at full, nice and sharp, makes everything look great. Very essential for uh, testing um, how your key is really going to look like. So I've set a little marker here so I can kind of work off this single frame. And I'll come over here and grab my ultra key, <clears throat> drop it right on my clip and go over to the effects controls. Now again, if you've never used Ultra before, um, it's very simple and you can see we've got lots of different parameters that we can modify. First step of course is just keying out the green. So we can select the familiar eyedropper tool here and you want to look for an area that's not sort of bright green, not the darkest green, but somewhere sort of in the middle. So I'm going to choose somewhere right around here. Here we go. Like that. And right away it looks pretty good and you can see I've got this little sort of animation behind him. Um, I mean, honestly, a single click, and it looks pretty darn good. I mean, let's just go, uh, let's go full screen on that for a minute. Not bad. Now you can see we've got a little, uh, a little green spill over here, and we can probably clean up some of this. You got a little bleed over there. Again, this wasn't perfectly lit. Sometimes they aren't, and that's the key to doing this, right? We can clean these up real quickly. The key here, of course, is that without a lot of effort, we can make this look pretty good. So I just twirl down some of these things. First and foremost. You'll notice that we've got color correction here, spill suppression, matte cleanup, and matte generation. All right, we've also got separate output settings here. So if we want to look at the alpha channel, again, we can take a look at that. And you can see, yeah, down here, this is an area where we'd want to clean this up a bit so we could increase, for instance, or, or rather um, decrease our shadows a bit like that just to kind of clean up some of those areas, adjust transparency and tolerance. Also, if we go to the color channel here, here's where we can work on effectively um, suppressing some of the color spill and again adjusting and making some uh, slight color corrections just so that this looks better as he's sort of moving through the frame. Roll this back up. Let's go back over to composite. And now what I'm going to do is just I'm going to slightly choke the mat. Now again, this is going a little too far here. See, we start losing his ear there. So let's just pull it in ever so slightly, right around there. And let's go ahead and let's actually try and play this in full res. I think we can handle it again. This is my uh, MacBook Pro Core i7 uh, 8 gig machine. Go ahead and hit play. Uh, Adobe Beach Bash 2010 for Adobe Middle East. And uh, we, we created this brand from absolutely nothing. I mean, this is really cool, right? Now, again, you're not seeing it in full frame rate because I'm capturing with iShowU. It's playing. <laughs> We've got live keying going on here. Now, again, that's not the most perfect key, so I created a preset for myself, and again, I can simply uh, remove this and uh, drop one of my presets on top of there. To save a preset, uh, it's very simple. After you've made your settings inside the keyer, you just select the effect, come over here to the flyout menu, and choose Save Preset. And again, let's just go ahead and we'll put this to quarter rest so we can play it with my background. And there it is. And we're uh, actually trying to export it throughout the middle. All right. So let's go ahead and skip over to the next thing, which is uh, time remapping. Now, this is going to take us back to some of that footage that I shot in India. And this was captured um, on the 7D at 60 frames per second, 720p. In this case, I'm just going to show you the easiest way to do it, which is quite simply, uh, if you're inside the video clip in the timeline in the sequence here, you can see you've got motion, opacity, and time remapping. Go ahead and choose time remapping speed, and you'll see that we have this little yellow line here. This is effectively your percentage for whether you want to speed up or slow down. So if we simply want to take this uh, 20, uh, sorry, 60 frame footage, which let's see, currently, let's go ahead and play this back at quarter res just for a second. 
So there's the there's the real time, uh, and I'm not. It's just a lot of noise there, so I won't bother playing that uh, audio noise. That is. Let's go ahead and take this now and drop this 50%. Now again, this is not brilliant footage. Again, this is me in a rickshaw, so I'm kind of bouncing around. Uh, you know, it's not the most steady footage, but what's really cool is that it's just going to look quite brilliant when we drop this to half speed. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and play this at full. Let's make this full screen. And let me just play, let's see, 50% here. Now again, we're in a slightly larger res, so you should see this pretty clearly. Ready? Again, not rendered, right from the camera to the timeline, time remapping, dropping at 50%, play. Now, it looks like it's a little, it might be a little skippy. That's again, me on the, on the rickshaw there. But just, I mean, it's so fluid. I don't know if it's coming through clearly enough and I show you. Very, very fluid, very, very beautiful. Um, the colors are rich. This is, I mean, this is untreated, right? Just dropping the speed. Now, of course, you can render this out and do other things, and it'll look even better. The key is that we're working off of the laptop here with no GPU acceleration. You can see that. We've got the red line. Brilliant. Nice. Beautiful. Okay, so that's slowing things down. Let's talk about doing that sort of time-lapse type deal where we speed everything up. So this was captured actually just the other day at our event in Singapore. And uh, what, what I effectively did, I don't have to play this, I'll just scrub through it, was I wanted to capture everyone sort of filling in the venue here, right? You see this a lot. They use it all the time in movies and such. So we just want to speed everything up. So once again, I can choose time remap, speed, come over here, and we're going to increase this Let's increase this by about 500 plus percent, maybe 520 percent. Now what's really cool about our time remapping, I don't know if you noticed this before, but as you speed up or slow down, here, let's start slowing down so you can see, um, it's actually going to show you that the clip is in fact, you know, shrinking. It's getting bigger, getting larger, because again, as you're changing time, the clip is taking up more or less time. So very easy to kind of work together. Uh, uh, with, you know, when you're uh, editing audio and other elements against this time remap footage um, because you can visually see how it's changed. So again, here we are, redlined. Let's go ahead and do this at, uh, we can probably do this at full res too. Let's go ahead and just hit play here. And now's where you want some kind of, you know, Benny Hill music. Okay, maybe full res is a little bit much for this system. Let's go back to quarter here and play it. And here we go. All right. You get the idea. Okay, so it's not quite coming through on uh, an I show you uh, as well as I'd like, but I think you get the point. And again, you can see this for yourselves on your machines. Very simple, very easy way to do uh, that kind of work. Okay, and the very last thing I'm going to show you here, stills extraction. Yes. So again, I've been shooting the 7D, and you can see some of the beautiful models that we had at the event. Let's just go ahead and drop this uh, to fit in the window here. We had some models at the event in Dubai and uh, at our beach bash, and I've I've basically been taking nothing but video. I haven't even, um, you know, I'm just pulling stills off the video. And uh, as with many, and it's something that I learned from uh, Mr. Bloom, pulling focus is sometimes a challenge uh, with these cameras. But you can see here, I've got a really nice, really beautiful uh, um, uh, piece that I could use for a still. So right here, right inside the timeline, I find the still I want, and we've got this new icon here. Export frame. Sorry, I got a little lost there in my zoom. Come over here. Let's name it Models Dubai. Choose the format that we want DPX, JPEG, PNG, Targa, TIFF. Let's choose TIFF. Choose where we want it to go so we can stick it right on the desktop if we choose. Choose it. OK it. Boom done, still extracted. And what's really cool now is, again, from within the media browser, we can simply pull that right back into the project if we so desire. Or we also have the option, of course, to bring that into Photoshop, or rather to bring it into uh, directly into um, a Camera Raw for further editing. So here we are, boom, there's the TIFF that we just created. And now we can send it over to Photoshop and continue working on it. Incredible things that you can do with DSLR. There's so much more, but that's going to be the end of this episode, friends. We'll see you next time.